morning and afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Gergoni. I'm the marketing coordinator for Perfect Video Conferencing. And I'm going to be your moderator for today's webinar. I want to welcome you to our How to Set Up a Video Conference Room Without Getting Fired webinar. And I uh, really want to thank you for joining us today. I know uh, you've taken your time out of your schedules to join us, uh, but we think you're going to get some valuable information from this webinar today. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to go over a couple of, lo of logistics items with you. Um, <clears throat> right now, participants are in audio uh, listen-only mode. Uh, you can watch the live streaming video, though, at record.perfectvc.com and just click live videos. Uh, additionally, uh, we are going to provide a link to the uh, webinar recording uh, to everybody that attended and registered. We'll be sending out an email uh, with that link uh, shortly after the webinar, so check your inboxes uh, and make sure that uh, you share the, uh, uh, the video with your colleagues and peers. Uh, we encourage you to do that. Uh, also, uh, we encourage feedback at uh, PVC. We really want to take your questions. Questions are encouraged. Uh, we're keeping track of them and monitoring them along with our chat uh, throughout the webinar. Uh, and we'll have a short uh, question and answer session towards the end of the webinar as well. Um, we'll be conducting, after I introduce uh, uh, my boss and CEO, uh, Randy, and uh, explain a little bit about uh, what we do at PVC, uh, we'll, we'll do a brief three-question poll and get some feedback uh, right away, and then uh, uh, Randy will continue to uh, conduct the webinar as the host. Uh, it looks like we're just about ready, so uh, why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, give you a little bit of background on uh, perfect video conferencing. Um, we really don't consider ourselves a uh, VAR, value added reseller. Uh, rather, we're a value added partner. And uh, we team with a family of world class partners to help create solutions for your business. Um, your success is uh, ultimately uh, of what's important to us, and we believe we have the resources to make you more successful. As you can see from some of the assumptions, uh, uh, in order for us to help you understand the value of using these resources, uh, we make the investment to be more than just a vendor, uh, provide ongoing maintenance, support training, uh, global support and deployment, uh, product releases, quarterly updates. Um, uh, that's all part of the package uh, with Perfect Video Conferencing. Um, <clears throat> we basically uh, try to innovate, uh, grow, and lead. Uh, video conferencing, as you know, and audio communications have been evolving uh, at a progressively rapid pace, and uh, it's not going to change. <laughs> it promises to continue. And we carefully analyze the latest technologies and trends and determine which makes sense to integrate into our suite of products and services. Uh, this allows us to provide you with the most current, most viable solutions for your business. Uh, basically, video, uh, perfect video conferencing understands uh, there's got to be an identifiable return on your investment uh, throughout our relationship, from learning about your business to crafting and implementing solutions. Perfect video conferencing puts your business in the position to realize the best possible return on your investment. Uh, later in the webinar, Randy will touch upon our 100% guarantee as well. I'll have to make a note to remember to do that. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, this slide basically, uh, I won't read it verbatim, but uh, take a, look, a brief look at our portfolio. Uh, key points here, really, uh, we're a managed service provider, uh, not only VoIP, but VAS as well. Um, solution architecture, deployment training, support and maintenance, uh, a little bit repetitive, but that's all part of the package uh, uh, when you uh, use uh, uh, perfect video conferencing and uh, our uh, vast array of partners. Um, they help us uh, fashion and deploy the right solution for you. I'm not going to be the guy that uh, reads every slide verbatim, at least I'm not going to try to. <laughs> but the key points here are, uh, if you want to focus on the E, easy to use solutions um, with you, your end users, and company goals in mind. Uh, also of interest is the technology, T. Uh, demonstrable lowest total cost of ownership across our entire portfolio. Uh, 
You're going to learn a lot more about our company uh, throughout this webinar, so I won't uh, go on too much longer. But basically, we strive for a perfect experience with you. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you. If you're uh, kicking the tires and thinking about uh, a video conferencing solution or uh, unified communication solutions, call us. We'd love to hear from you. Email us. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we have 516-282-2815 uh, uh, two eight one five is our phone number. If you have any uh, uh, issues at all joining the conference or uh, have any questions, support at perfectvc.com is where you should email us. Um, as I transition now into uh, introducing my boss, it's uh, my privilege to introduce Randy Marcotte. He's the company's president, CEO, and co-founder. I'll give you a little bit of background on Randy uh, after his data and IP experiences at AT&T around the turn of the century. That's a fun term to use, actually. Uh, he became the VP of Sales and Marketing at a leading Bay Area reseller of IP networks, short tell on life-size products uh, through Extelesis. Um, <clears throat> Randy turned his passion for creating, organizing, and selling into strategic partnerships that leverages intensity while creating Global Call, a SIP-based managed VoIP and conferencing solutions, and perfect video conferencing, IP video conferencing solutions offered as a managed service. Uh, with over two decades of experience, Randy's an authority in video conferencing, uh, recognized as a video conferencing expert. He was interviewed by Frost and Sullivan, as well as other credible organizations in the industry. Uh, Rashi, Randy is passionate about sharing his wealth of knowledge with others on video conferencing. Uh, just among the partners uh, uh, that he uh, uh, deals with is Troytel, Logitech, LifeSize, Zoom, and Blue Jeans, just a few of the leading brands that uh, uh, Randy's a strategic partner of. Without further ado, Mr. Marcotte, the stage is yours. Oh, thanks a lot, Ken, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're mostly going to do this with some camera off. We wanted to toggle between content sharing uh, and desktop just to kind of show the, the use the, we have found in our own consumption of webinars. Um, seeing someone talk isn't nearly as um, exciting as uh, actually hearing content and seeing the content. We do want to show that we do both content sharing and, um, and camera so that uh, you get to see the kind of the full, the full functionality. Uh, we, uh, this also gives me a nice mirror to, to make sure that uh, all, is, all is right with the bow tie. Uh, we are uh, technology resellers of a number of products. We happen to be using the Zoom webinar today because it is a great modality to kind of show and, and do at the same time. But the dot you see there is actually Life Size's uh, video center. It's their recording infrastructure. So uh, we pride ourselves in knowing uh, most things about the best things in the market. So uh, most things about best things in the market and what we bring to you is a portfolio that uh, gets you a solution you need. There's some blog posts that I'm going to go to and uh, the content uh, of, the, of the webinar coming just a little bit towards the end. So if you feel like you want to tune out just a little bit, you're welcome to do so. But wake up in about 20 minutes because uh, that's where the uh, things uh, you'll, you'll hear about the, the items that don't get you fired uh, will, will come front and center. I do. Um, uh, I am monitoring chat and uh, polling questions, so we'll see that on screen uh, as you need it. And then we've got um, someone monitoring the video center chat. So if you feel like you want to enter things there, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome to do so. Uh, those of you that are on audio only, because uh, we do see a number of people who have phoned in. Again, the the, the mics are not open um, uh, by design. Uh, and so we will have a moment later where we do open up those mics. So the, for those of you who have dialed in on the phone, uh, we uh, we are going to support uh, full open mics, which means if you're not speaking, we'll uh, also respectfully ask you uh, to do the magic mute. Uh, I want to uh, m move over to our website just to point out a couple of things uh, about the webinar today that's going to be useful, some blog posts uh, that, are, that are posted and uh, in production that you can use to navigate through the content uh, beyond the slides that we're going to show, and then content that you can come back to later. Uh, so we did a series of five blog posts that are the components of um, the best practices, and then there are some overarching best practices uh, that we want to point out that kind of sum it all together. Now, I have been asked over email and a couple of calls this week about why we're doing this in such an open format because we actually have some competitors tuning into this and we weren't terribly uh, um, 
restrictive on who was joining and who was entering. And, and some of our uh, consortium partners, the folks that we collaborate with, were surprised to see that I had uh, uh, no issue with sharing uh, this gee wizardry uh, and a crooked tie with uh, with competitors. And the reason being is, for me, competitors are future collaborators. And there's plenty of market share to be uh, to be uh, coordinated, and we can do a better job working together, uh, or we can compete and see who wins, and that's kind of fun too. So we'll see what happens. But what I'm saying, uh, and what I'll present today, some of it is, quite frankly, our proprietary practice. And there's documentation and forms and, and processes that we use in our CRM to manage this process end to end. So while I'm very comfortable with uh, many uh, folks tuning in and learning about what to do and how to do it right, um, and then you might just go do it yourself. And I think that's a better experience for our customers. So for those of you that are tuning in that are competitors and you feel like I've missed something, or if you feel like you want to copy this, please please call me with those things that we've missed. Please copy, because um, we also waste a lot of time cleaning up uh, poorly done conference rooms uh, and helping someone not get fired. It'd be nice that if the video conferencing industry took this uh, game and elevated it a little bit and some of the intention again and why I'm okay with some of our competitors being on here is that I do think that we can do a better job particularly as the price points of these systems and the and the the various options have become so darn confusing the better job we do the easier it is going to keep our customers happy and stay in business so uh, again uh, open forum on this for those of you that are competitors for those of you who and there's a few that registered that are lapsed uh, collaboration partners. A couple of, and a shout out to the Canada folks that have uh, joined in. I just saw a couple come in. Um, the, uh, for those of you who are lapsed uh, collaborators, welcome back. Um, this is kind of the new version and a 1.0 version of perfect video conference, and we were mostly short tell and life size. And with the industry diversifying and getting really confusing, uh, we've also diversified. We have other things that are coming to our own software product that we're going to be excited about. So again, to that second group of folks um, that have joined that are uh, either active collaborators um, or lapsed collaborators, welcome back uh, and then reach out to me directly. I'd love to uh, make sure that you've got the latest and greatest about what we're doing and, and, and how we're doing it. Uh, Great. Uh, one final logistics note, um, the, the, the bigger, more important group uh, is the customers that have joined, or future customers, uh, prospects as it were. Uh, we want to strike the right balance on uh, calling you and not annoying the crap out of you. So you will get a call, you will get a thank you, but I should start with my, my own thank you here. At, um, time is money and thank you for spending some of your money and time with me today. Uh, but one of our sales team will reach out to you. Uh, not only do we want to help you look at these products and look at it um, uh, in a, a comprehensive manner, we also want your feedback on the process overall, just to make sure that um, we're striking the right balance. Uh, mm. We market, and market can be annoying. And Ken and I both want to make sure we get that touch point and balance uh, better, better, and best uh, as, as we can. Great. Uh, part of the other goal on this is just to give you resources. So I'm going to uh, navigate over, as I mentioned, um, uh, to uh, to the meeting and then um, uh, share some additional content uh, via the web. So stand by for logistics while I make that change. I'm also going to check on Mike to see if there's anything coming in from Thomas. So Thomas, just wanted to check to see if we had anything coming in via the web uh, before I move on uh, in content. Not just yet, Randy. Thank you for uh, your help. If you do um, have any logistics, you can reach out to uh, support. Uh, support at perfectvc.com, and Thomas is eager to help you if you've got uh, problems. All right, let me pair this unit. Uh, what I'm doing right now, just to show additional content, is I'm just going to share uh, .zoom.us, and you'll see um, you'll see that come in. So you're welcome to kind of poke around at some of these resources. I'm going to make a reference to them as we're doing this video because. Uh, it's helpful for you guys to see not only um, uh, that it's fairly easy to do, uh, but that ultimately uh, anyone can do it. If I can do it, then, uh, you can too. All right, so here comes. Uh, da, 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 da. So uh, when you're in a webinar, part of the share thing does is it gives you a, an option to uh, uh, register. You've already done that, so uh, thanks for uh, poking in. Uh, all right, uh, I'm going to move over to uh, the kind of the meat of the blog post essentially it comes down to um, these five items uh, uh, that 
for us are very specific about the experience you'll get in your conference room, and then we'll wrap that up. So we're probably a half an hour away um, from a, a Q and A section if uh, you need to take a bathroom break uh, during this. But um, and uh, again, for those of you who look at this on recording, you'll be able to come back. I mentioned I wanted to give out resources. So first one, uh, we've just relaunched our website. We're very proud of it. Um, glad to have you navigate to it. But if you're wondering what we sell and why the heck we sell it. Uh, you can go over to the, our partner's site and see a whole list of uh, beautiful, wonderful products that we specialize in. And there are some things that are, aren't, are not on that list um, for, a, for a host of reasons, where uh, Polycoms has some great products, Cisco has some great products, um, other great bridges coming to market. We just uh, have, don't have the bandwidth or the skill uh, to manage those. And, and quite frankly, the, the products we've sold, we consider a better mousetrap. They uh, move a little faster or a little slightly faster horse, better price points. Um, and, and Cisco, if you're a Cisco shop end end, is likely the right location for you as an endpoint. But we're going to want to talk to you about bridge and collaboration and unified communications and sort of the, all the integrations, um, and particularly getting the boardroom right. And if you're a polycom shop, you might be buying gear but not deploying it properly. So again, uh, you'll see things missing from this list only because we want to make sure that we're doing this perfectly. Uh, we didn't want to go for eh, kind of okay video conferencing. We wanted to go for perfect, and it's in our DNA uh, uh, to get that right. Uh, you'll hear, as Ken mentioned, a little bit about um, our, not only our TCO uh, process, but our guarantee um, on, on products. You can read that, actually, quite, quite frankly, at the website. If you're one that likes to navigate, um, there's, again, TCO, 100% guarantee. The other resource I wanted to point out is the actual blogs and then our store. So a number of the products that you'll see here, uh, we've enabled at the very high level some MSRP pricing on the more common things to purchase because uh, we want to make sure that's an easy transaction for you, quick, um, and uh, web, uh, web and credit card enabled. If you're an existing customer, you'll be able to log in and get your pre-negotiated volume purchase agreement discount. If you're just the general public and you want to search online, you're only going to find MSRP, but we do encourage you to poke around there um, and see what we can do to help you out uh, via our web store. All right, back over to the blogs. I'm over at resources. I go over to blog. Um, uh, first resources, uh, dun, 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 dun. news, knowledge-based blogs, not anything terribly surprising. You likely had gone over to the event. Check out the events page for future stuff. Um, head over to our blog, and it's there under perfect video content. You'll see not only the introductory um, email to this web series, but some resources that we're turning into a white paper, and it's the kind of one through five that I'm going to go into now. So if you're someone who wants more detail during the webinar, you're welcome to tune in. I'm just going to give the highlights. So, grand scheme of things, uh, let's not get you fired. And here I am being dramatic, right? So setting up a conference room uh, shouldn't be terribly hard. Doesn't usually get you fired, but when it goes bad, it can go south very, very fast. And some of that uh, experience, because you're spending a lot of money, and this could lead to uh, uh, termination events, not maybe for you, maybe for your subs or, or me as your partner. So I'm also saying um, set up a video conferencing without getting us fired, uh, me being your vendor. Because if you're not happy with the solution, it's more likely I'm going to go and perfect video conference is going to go before you lose your job. Um, the checklist and the webinar is really about let's work together to have the right expectations about the performance of the equipment so that neither of us get fired. But again, you, you'll leave today with some checklists, some key points to remember that if you're evaluating a solution, maybe you'll evaluate with us. But if you're evaluating with one of our collaborators or our competitors, you can use this as a roadmap, a guide, uh, your Blarney Stone to find out which, um, which place to touch to, to get it right. Um, but, all right, let me uh, zoom ahead to my... Um, Speaker notes, make sure I'm not missing any points on this. Stand by while I move forward. Great. So uh, speaking first about the checklist. One thing we know and we encourage our current customers to consider is that a video solution can be, and quite frankly should be, immersive. But that's a promise that needs uh, to, uh, to be checked against the project delivery. 
Um, the solution must be flexible and easy to use, and your end users are the clearest canary uh, in that gold mine. So the uh, the one thing that we know in in sort of setting up a room is that design will matter. We want to make it pop, we want to make it pretty and get the right furnishing, and if you don't get any of that right, and lighting and furniture can really impact echo and design and camera behaviors. Uh, we want to have you consider in this checklist kind of the number two item is consider your audience, both near side and on the far side. Meaning, you're going to want to understand the limits of the technology and train your users uh, accordingly. Let me actually go to presentation mode so it'll be a little bit prettier. There we go. Uh, go ahead and train your uh, users accordingly uh, and make sure that those two are aligned. So the function of the technology and the expectations of the end users, uh, if those aren't in line, sort of the second item, we'll oftentimes see people get um, uh, fairly frustrated, not only with us as your vendor, but with the technology in general. Uh, Content sharing, as I'm doing here. You want to decide, do you want face, camera, and content, face only, content only, you want to do it wireless, wired. In your kind of the number three item of checklist in designing a, a room is have that thought out and decided. Uh, we as a vendor will go in in many cases and smell blood in the water and, and go after a bigger sale if those things haven't been decided, meaning uh, ultimately, if the customer can't make up their mind, some of my competitors, my collaborators, and even sometimes I want to upsell an opportunity. Um, and we're going to value engineer these things to your budget and to your process, but because margins get thin, we want to go big. Uh, and if we go too big, you'll send us home. So in, in, indeed, we want to have you in this sort of third item, take a look at the content sharing options because the more complicated, the more expensive. That's going to be something you hear throughout the webinar. The more complicated, the more expensive. Um, but also the, the, the complement to that is the less you have decided, the more we're going to suggest, which can then just lead to confusion and lack of clarity. So we don't want to make good the enemy of best. Right. These two can actually be in collaboration. So um, uh, some of these debates can sometimes feel like how many angels fit on the head of a pin. In the grand scheme of things, the more you as a customer can drive this process and be clear, particularly as it relates to content sharing and the user's experience, the better it is. All right, fourth item, um, integration. Uh, on this checklist for us, uh, ultimately integrating with what? Is this scheduling tool going to a wall board? Is it going on screen? Is it going to a welcome desk at the reception? Is it integrating to Outlook or Exchange or uh, email infrastructure? So it's not just about your conference room. It's about the meeting that's happening in the conference room. And if you haven't given some thought ahead of time to integration, not just to the room, and am I dropping the blinds with the control panel, or am I uh, turning on the projector and the TVs with the control panel? Uh, am I then also integrating to the user's experience and the guest experience? So integration used to just be about turning shit on and off and making sure things work and plugging things in and, and having one touch panel. Today, integration has gone well beyond that to how is the experience overall and who's involved and, and how complicated does it need to be. So make sure that you've thought through um, integration. Um, and then the, uh, the final thing, uh, there are eight on the blog post, so I want to talk about five on this checklist. Um, the final thing on, on this, number five, would be uh, make sure you plan for scale, uh, meaning ultimately that uh, what you do in one room you could likely do in all rooms. This is the biggest of the, uh, the five blog posts, so I won't go nearly in this kind of detail in the rest of them. So. Uh, Ken, don't worry, we will end on time and have time for credits. I know we want to move on to poll, but uh, again, the checklist is kind of the big thing that gets you started. Because within the checklist, become uh, you will find items around audio, design, cameras, and mistakes. So I'm going to uh, pivot to the audio uh, issues, because those, um, those you'll see can kill a call. I mean, I could actually um, and not only kill a call, but also kill the user's experience um, and the overall um, uh, video conferencing project. So a bad conference room will look worse if audio fails. A mediocre video room will perform great if audio is fine. On the blog post, you'll see that we have a list of end user issues like muting and the invitation being clear and are we addressing any of this in training um, and encouraging users to speak up if they hear an echo. We like to say to our users that if um, 
If uh, you don't hear the echo, you're likely the cause. So those that don't hear echo, and generally in audio purposes, are the ones that are causing the echo. Uh, muting is um, your friend. Uh, but again, we do encourage the end user to, if they hear something, to say something, not just to ignore it. Uh, and then uh, end user side of this, we, we do want to say, go ahead and take the call from a coffee shop, but know the limits, or take it from your home office and know the limits. Are you using a plug-in camera? Are you using a headset? Um, are you using Wi-Fi versus a uh, network? And in our environment, um, we're doing speed tests. We're making sure that we're getting at least uh, 512K um, a bandwidth up and down and um, and not to get too nerdy but that bandwidth can matter and many of the desktop apps are now pushing for HD video calling and that's going to take a meg and if you don't have that kind of bandwidth uh, don't expect the kind of experience um, uh, you would get in a, in a conference room with a codec that you would get on a desktop so set for those end users the right expectation in that blog post on audio you'll see similar things that pivot towards the room it's about testing sound in all of the rooms, not just one demo facility. So your vendor may suggest a particular microphone array that works great in a 10 by 10, uh, and then you deployed it in a 40 by 40. And if you've not calibrated the microphones or the expectations, someone's going to be pissed. Um, and if you don't have a budget, so the second thing you'll see in the, in the room side of this, if you don't have a budget that corresponds with um, reality, um, and you're trying to choose a um, a, a low-end uh, Prius uh, solution. I drive a Prius, uh, so I'm not insulting anyone other than myself. It, uh, and, and comparing that against a Tesla, um, you're going to get what you pay for. Uh, both are beautiful. Both get you point A to point B, but the uh, the budget you have should design uh, the outcome. But the room acoustics will make a huge difference. Um, mixers. Um, Digital sound processors, speakers, microphones, all of those are w awesome. Many of the devices can do this built in, like the one I'm talking to, but you're going to want to have some baseline understanding um, because, again, most of us in this industry are, are attuned to finding someone who doesn't know anything and then try to tell them all they need to know. Uh, our job isn't really to um, educate you to the sale on the product we like best. Our job is to educate you um, to the solution that best fixes the problem you have. And if, uh, and if you're not attuned to that difference, um, that's a good place to start uh, in, in your design. Again, being attuned towards uh, uh, having your vendor listen for the problem being solved versus product they want to sell. Um, and then escalate. Uh, escalate and escalate. Test the room early. Um, if there are problems early, there will be problems later. Um, and if you don't address those and get the right resources in, uh, everyone's going to be pissed off pretty soon. And meaning, uh, your VAR, or your, your, your partner, like Perfect Video Conferencing, if we have problems, we're going to go to Shure, Clear One, or Polycom, or any of the audio people that do this day to day. And even though that we're experts in what we do, we're going to make sure that we bring in people who are smarter than us so that you don't have to wait for the solution you've purchased. Um, Google design, um, go to the blog post, if you do conference room design options, this goes back circa 25 years or more. It's back, even back in my at t global services days, we would sell uh, ISDN based video conferencing knowing that uh, the room would make a huge difference and the more you spend some time in the room uh, knowing that the acoustics matter and the design matters, the better the expectation. And that comes down to even things like uh, uh, color, placement of reflective objects, softness of the furniture, hardness of the table, uh, window coverings, lighting, a number of things that are fairly important. So uh, the, the key takeaway on this, and again, there's a lot more on the blog post, that every room is special. Uh, but every room can make a lot of problems um, show up, so we want to make sure that you consider the design appropriately. Um, and then uh, we can do this really well in, in even very small huddle rooms as well as uh, large complicated boardrooms. And it doesn't have to be a uh, $100,000 build uh, to get it right. Uh, cameras. Uh, so key thing about cameras is that they're not all created equally. Uh, and please, please, please don't expect the embedded camera in your $500 laptop to perform to the same level and same skill set as a $3,500 pan tilt zoom um, camera. And if you put a awesome 
$90 Logitech camera on the top of a large TV at the far end of a 40-foot room, you're going to get an experience that's pretty darn good and better than it used to be, but you're not going to get the experience of a, either a video conferencing system like a life-size Icon 600 or a Vadio USB camera that does some pan tilting and zooming. You're not, those are going to be very different experiences. And if you've got an end user that could care less, you could probably do the $90 laptop camera, you know, fake Kodak thing and Hangouts. That's not my customer base. My customer base, and hopefully you, or someone who wants to have the ability to catch the communications that come in, uh, not just verbally with great audio, but visually, and that ultimately is generally the primary purpose of video conferencing. So some cameras, as you'll see in the blog post, have an ability to do color correction or white balance, and as they pan, tilt, and zoom, they'll, they'll adjust based on what they see in the frame, and then you can do some voice tracking or presets. And I would tread cautiously into the voice tracking or person tracking or dongle tracking space because the environmental factors will impact the range of those devices. So uh, certainly we love doing those, but um, again, much like the, uh, the kind of the checklist and audio parts of the first uh, couple of sections in this camera uh, thing, we want to make sure that you are setting and calibrating the right expectations across your user group. Yeah. As I mentioned, there's a, there's a ton more in the, um, in the uh, blog post about this. One more note that I wanted to um, point out is that make sure you're vendor isn't doing a camera for the first time. Uh, just because it's cool and they saw it at a trade show doesn't mean they should do on-the-job training in your deployment. We want to have these cameras function the way you want them to and to, um, uh, and to perform the way the manufacturer says they will, not the way the partner says they will. So a lot of cleanup and ticket items we get is uh, folks calling us who have a camera that's deployed and plugged in properly but deployed into the wrong room, meaning that it's well outside of the scope of what the manufacturer says the camera is capable of doing and the wrong expectations have been set. So uh, final piece on the blog that you'll see is some uh, general mistakes. I've, uh, there are just really five that stand out. They are essentially, there could be some poor planning, uh, not involving all the stakeholders, not knowing or having a scope and a clear budget, um, having a, a, a static design that fails, meaning just one cookie cutter approach, um, and then um, not really uh, balancing function against reality. I'm going to go back through those five in a little bit more detail, but those are the common mistakes. I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to give Ken the, uh, the two minute pivot uh, warning that we're going to uh, move over and look at polling questions and anything online and then um, and then go into essentially what is the meat of the matter of um, the, what are the five takeaways that having all of this experience our team and, and I have, have come up with five key indicators uh, as we're smelling an opportunity or working for a client or uh, prospecting for a, a new customer or coaching a, a new uh, channel partner there are five things that we look for in an opportunity that that haven't been mentioned here that really are the things that get a lot of um, uh, our deployment into, into hot water or the deep end of the pool without uh, the ability to swim. Uh, we don't want you to get fired, we want to get hired by you, and we don't want to get fired. So again, I want to go back over these uh, common mistakes just a little bit more, and then Ken, this gives you a kind of a, a moment's notice to see if there's anything that's coming in over Q&A and, and chat. Uh, <clears throat> right now, I don't see any, so you must be answering everybody's questions. Okay, good. You are welcome to uh, interrupt me. Uh, clearly, I like the sound of my own voice, and I'll keep talking. Um, but ultimately, if there are questions or clarifications, I know I've been uh, spot on and crystal clear throughout this webinar, so I may just have dazzled you to uh, to boredom or to, uh, to, to take copious amounts of notes. If in those copious notes you actually have questions, you're welcome to, uh, to pop those in. Now back to the uh, common mistakes. The, the key takeaway around uh, uh, poor planning is that when we have watched uh, video conferencing test periods or deployment periods at the early stages, if there's not a clear project lead and an outcome, there can generally create a, an environment where there are just too many cooks in the kitchen. Uh, and it'll let your team, who's helping you deploy this video solution, wander. Not only wander in their uh, looking and, and, and 
product baking, but wander in the options that are available. And because there are so many vendors in this space and so many options in this space, it can get really crowded fast. And just because everyone has an opinion doesn't mean that they're right, uh, nor that you have to listen to it. So the, the better planning and project plan and uh, design you have in mind, the, the more you can be efficient and effective in this process. And isn't that what business is about? It's a little bit of efficiency and effectiveness. Um, if you don't involve your stakeholders, uh, we have watched uh, the post-deployment opinion crush the dreams of video conferencing, meaning the, the guy that wasn't there during the bake-off or during the deployment, um, who didn't, when you offered him 20 uh, opportunities uh, for an opinion, will then give it later. Well, if you've given him 20 options to give an opinion and you've involved the stakeholders, um, then they don't, um, they don't have a veto. They may have a vote and they may have an opinion, but you've chosen a solution based on feedback and internal stakeholders. And we get into a lot of hot water when someone new comes to the table um, and, uh, and uh, essentially has a different perception of what should be done versus what could be done. And know your scope, know your budget. Um, that will keep your vendor in line. Um, more to be said on that, and um, this is going to be a place as I wrap up here to go to our ROI guarantee, so uh, I'll come back to that one with more detail. Um, a static design fails, meaning if you don't have bigger conference rooms or smaller conference rooms in mind as you're planning a design and choosing a product, uh, one size does not fit all. and so. You may have eight rooms across the globe that you're trying to outfit, and they're all of a 10 by 10 form factor. Awesome. Uh, we love to help you with that. But we want to also look at the huddle rooms or the phone booths and the board rooms and the training facilities. So let's choose solutions that scale down and scale up, go to the home office, and go to the auditorium, and, and all points in between. Ultimately, uh, choose that um, design uh, that scales in any direction. And then, as I said, I'm going to come back to the uh, knowing the scope and budget uh, and our guarantee, but the last one was uh, balance the function, budget, and reality. So balance function, what does this thing do, how much balance budget, how much do I have, and reality. So you may love and want the smart board touch panel, uh, purely configurable $25,000 per monitor uh, experience, and we'd love to sell that to you across you know, 10 conference rooms. But not everyone has that kind of budget uh, or need in the organization, and you'll hear a little bit more about that in just a moment. Okay, so uh, Ken, just uh, have you check in to see if there's anything coming in from Q and A. And uh, we actually have two questions. Good. Let me um, queue up the uh, uh, the TCO thing you had mentioned, and then the guarantee. Uh, there aren't many of my competitors that will do this, but I'm fairly. Uh, and, and you're welcome to attempt to try this. It took us many years to get here. Um, and we have a, a contracting process in place. And essentially, we're going to say to our customers, and you'll see this on the website, uh, we know what it takes to deploy a video conferencing solution uh, with no additional spend. That's your total cost of ownership. So less travel, better meetings, more recordings, better retention of employees, all of those events in your organization can be impacted in all of the, uh, by video conferencing. Many of those problems can be solved by video conferencing. So my team and you will look at a total cost of ownership, much like we can with your short telephone system, and say the cost to carry this over time, the cost to own it over time, um, should balance out. And you'll hear from us often a comment that sounds like, don't spend any new money on video conferencing. Spend the same money you're spending elsewhere on this. So we'll have that. ROI in line. Now, if we've done that and we've gone through an extensive review together and we agree that the outcomes of your project are A, B, and C, if after 12 months we review that and we haven't hit it and we haven't corrected it, I shouldn't make any money. So we're willing to sign a contract on this, take away the risk, and give you your money back, give you the profit back. So if you own a camera, I can't put it back into inventory, but we'll, we, uh, we shouldn't make money on something we can't do well. So go ahead and take a look at that guarantee, understand it, and Ken, thanks for um, bringing it up. There was another point on um, the slides as uh, we pivot to questions, and then the final piece that I wanted to make uh, point out on Ken, so let me just go back to this. The other thing to, to keep in mind is that uh, this ought to be fun. Uh, so the F in this and perfect is uh, not only is it functional, but we want to have some fun in the process and make sure that we're adding some value uh, to your engagement. So um, keep us honest on 
that promise as well. Ken, you need help with the questions, or you want to raise those? What's the um, first one? Uh, is what is our recommendation for an affordable HD camera for both a user on a laptop and one for a conference room? Uh, so, laptop assumes then a um, uh, a USB connection. So, uh, the 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 king of the industry on that one so uh, is the Logitech C920 or C930. There's slightly different software in that. Uh, Candidly, any of the uh, laptop um, plug-in cameras are great if they have built-in software that does echo cancellation and some white balance control. So again, the C920 from Logitech or the B930, you can see those on our website. Uh, there are a number of other, and Microsoft makes a really great HD webcam. We have found that the more consumer Best Buy versions the C versions of a Microsoft or the C versions of Logitech have built in things like Skype and FaceTime drivers. You want to get one as stripped down as possible, which is why you spend a little bit more for those, but they're optimized for enterprise management, which then from an IT perspective, if you're sending out thousands of those, uh, you'll then know one software driver, no pull from the internet to do a direct firmware upgrade. Um, so that's the challenge of the the Best Buy, you know, sort of consumer electronic Amazon devices, is those laptop-based USB cameras will oftentimes search the internet for the latest driver, which then can create IT events for you and conflicts with with the, with the Mac. So if you're having compatibility, I oftentimes hear this question and really underneath it is, we, we have compatibility issues. I've chosen life-size cloud and this camera doesn't work or that camera doesn't work. So. I'm generally speaking to the Logitech camera, just because of the price to performance, it's awesome, but you may have a specific need uh, in your environment and some incompatibility issues, and we would love to explore those with you at no cost to you to make sure you're choosing the right camera. And so if that's underneath that question, we're, we're, we're glad to participate. Again, the, uh, the business grade USB cameras, the Logitech Conference Cam Connect, looks like a Pringles can, uh, under 500 bucks, that darn thing um, gives you not only a place to play your music, but you can also do HD uh, Bluetooth sharing to it, and then it can uh, be swapped into a huddle room. Fairly awesome, but it's a little bit bigger to carry around. So the one I'm talking about, I'm just going to move over to my camera for a moment. Um, Ken, that also makes me sort of think about the, the, uh, the conference room. So this is the one that I was uh, making reference to um, as far as kind of the workhorse, although this Mac, brand new, has a pretty darn awesome embedded camera. So uh, uh, choose, choose and go as you uh, um, as you need, and call us if you need some help. Again, the other piece on that, Ken, is uh, what about in the conference room? So uh, Aver, Vadio um, make some really great USB cameras that we've tested uh, on all of the products. But almost any USB driver, if they're Downward compatible to 2.0 USB are going to work great. So Life Size makes a a, um, a a USB flex unit. We like the ones that, um, quite frankly, can register to SIP. So there are if you're going to choose a USB camera in a conference room, uh, go ahead and make sure that the the microphone device that it has. Uh, and I'm just going to show this one. Make sure that the device that it has can also register to SIP. So if you've done a video conferencing solution in a conference room with a USB camera, can can it register? to SIP. Uh, if it can, then you don't need two devices on the desktop. Uh, we do a lot of the Logitech group. Um, for a $1,400 camera, the field of range it has and what the camera can do is awesome. But it doesn't register to SIP, so on that platform, you need to register either to a cloud service that does voice over IP so you can get phone calls out of it, or uh, choose a device that you can make a PBX-based call when you're just using a phone, or then choose a, a USB camera that registers SIP. That would be the other uh, key distinction. If you're going into a codec, uh, the manufacturer generally provides a camera that goes with them. So there's um, Clear Ones, there's Vadios, there's all sorts of ones that are great uh, plugins to uh, interop with a video conferencing system. This happens to be a, a life-size 10x camera. We're quite happy with the Yealink and Aver cameras because there's not a mechanical pan tilt zoom, it's magnetic. So your end users who have this bad habit of cranking the camera uh, won't go into those rooms and break break the camera. They can just move the camera and it has much more pivot zone, uh, again, because it's done on a magnetic base, not a uh, mechanical gear-based 
I'm way in the weeds on that, Ken. Thanks for bringing up the technical questions. Is there anything else? We got more. All right, more coming in. Uh, let's let's uh, go ahead and ask one more. Do the poll, and then we'll go to the okay. the, the the questions. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, Joe asks, uh, do we have a solution or solutions that make it easy for users five clicks max that work with Skype, WebEx, GoToMeeting, all without needing a dedicated laptop, conference rooms? Okay, so Joe wants a device. Um, I wonder if Joe works at Logitech uh, or Pixip. So uh, yes and no, Joe. So there's essentially uh, there are essentially things that are using near field communication now, and Logitech and Pixip and Zoom, Blue Jeans and Life Size and Zoom will have this base station where I come in with my mobile device and I have been uh, I've connected to the Wi-Fi and I have a Blue Jeans meeting here and I tap the device. It takes the PC that's in room and launches the um, it launches the Blue Jeans interface, and then I enter my meeting credentials and I'm in. Um, and so that is assuming a hub that talks to a computer that then talks to a camera. So the camera in this place becomes the passive participant to what some intelligent hub uh, says. Now, for me, as far as just a basic USB camera that works and never fails and has great optics and great sound, it's a uh, $2,800, the life-size USB, it's called the FLX, uh, that one's awesome. Uh, but then again, the Logitech devices are um, equally cool and uh, better price point, quite frankly, but they don't register to SIP. So really, Joe, it depends on your need, uh, but look for those near-field communications to make uh, the bring-your-own-conferencing options available. Now, the bridges we sell, be it Blue Jeans, Life Size or Zoom all have an interoperability with those Skype clients. So, uh, it, uh, based on what you put in there, and you're welcome to add um, some clarification. Based on what you put in the question, it seems as though you want to have people bring their own conferencing to a room and have a camera work. Um, again, that's uh, for me generally been the uh, Life Size USB Flex unit. The Logitech Group works uh, really, really well. No drivers needed because all of it's built in, and that is the key thing. Choose a camera that has its software built in and doesn't force the end user to install anything. So, Ken, do you want to do any more questions or do you want to go to the polls? Go to the poll. Let's go to the polls. You don't need to see me on this camera in order to do that. Uh, and uh, again, I could do dual stream on this, but for the recording purposes, it's much cleaner, prettier uh, to do uh, less of my mug and more of the slides. So, uh, am I launching that or are you? Poll number one, launch poll. All right, uh, what issues have stopped you from using video conferencing? And it is multiple choice. We'd love to get, um, there are three questions that are coming in in this poll. Um, uh, poke along, play along, enjoy. We just want to get some sense sort of, um, are we hitting the mark? All right, have some initial stuff coming in. I think for the next one, Ken, we'll need to have some um, musical interlude uh, for calling. I can't sing, so don't count on me. <laughs> we are planning to uh, send the poll results out as a follow-up to this, so uh, it is not our intention to do kind of live feedback on the poll. Um, yeah, I've got some responses coming in, so thank you for... Uh, Chiming in. All right, Ken, we're uh, one minute and eight seconds in on three questions. The second question um, should be presented to you already. It uh, says, uh, if you've seen video conferencing fail, what stands out? Um, and then your options are poor adoption from users, bad audio complexity, the quality of the call, content sharing, and the stuff is too expensive. Yeah. And then on your final one, um, all right, attendees are now viewing questions only. Yes, I know that. Thank you for telling me that, Zoom. Uh, the final question was, uh, what do you feel are the best benefits from video conferencing? Uh, and uh, again, we just want to get a sense of what the market, um, based on the 25 or so of you that are uh, participating in this uh, feel, uh, we know what we think, but if we can get some validation from you on this, that'd be great. So uh, again, what are the best benefits from video conferencing? And some options are less travel, better participation and collaboration, higher quality meetings, 
retention of employees, team collaboration, vendor management, HR and training, and recording. It's those last um, items that um, I put in there a little bit as a sleeper, meaning um, it is our assumption, candidly, that uh, many people look at video conferencing as a solution that is about travel or better meeting or um, or higher quality meetings, but it really, for us, has pivoted to better collaboration, more unified collaborations, better vendor management, uh, HR, training, retention. Uh, if you can record it, just record your best training once. If you can uh, do a remote session and turn that into a knowledge base article, why wouldn't you? So we're trying to encourage you to think outside of the camera and think outside of the box when looking at video conferencing. All right, Ken, with my stalling tactics, we've now had uh, three minutes per poll. Um, I'm going to end the poll and you and I can aggregate the information and get it um, out to folks. Thank you for participating. Got some good click throughs on that. Um, sir, what would you like to do next? Well, we've got five minutes and one more question if you want to answer that. Let's, um, let's hold that question so I can get into um, in five minutes the five things that don't get you fired. Um, Ken, during this, has also uh, published a, a new blog post. On this, so we've already been talking about the assumptions of conferencing, the connections that get us into a great uh, uh, conference room. The next blog series is about choosing the right bridge. So today's blog series is has really been about uh, what does we what do we do in a conference room, and and which camera, which audio, what what are the headaches, the pitfalls, uh, and the conundrums. Once we're beyond that, we're going to need to glue all of this together. And uh, if your users are used to the Cisco telepresence experience, you're going to get a different drive from them than if they're used to Skype or uh, Google Hangouts or FaceTime. So you're going to want to uh, calibrate your need uh, uh, against that. So again, uh, Ken has posted that. Enjoy. Uh, you are in charge of your own video conferencing solution. So don't let my team drive you. You drive them. Um, the technology then answers to the users, meaning uh, you might be in charge of driving the project, but your user is going to tell you whether or not you chose an egg um, uh, or a what? I don't know, a, a, a lemon or a uh, an orange. I don't know what the metaphor works best there, but you get my point. Is like, have you uh, uh, crapped the bed or have you spiked the football? We want you to spike the football. Uh, and value drives price, meaning uh, to you, uh, this thing has to have a value, and value in your organization will help design budget. I can't be the one who decides your budget, because then I'm just going to go big. Uh, great. Uh, very key takeaways, not anything uh, terribly new, but we feel like these five things are great ways of uh, summarizing. So again, uh, five key considerations, just as a quick wrap up. Uh, plan the work and work the plan, meaning uh, ultimately, know what you want to do and the pathway that you want to uh, use to get there. I'm going to be glad and my team's going to be helpful to guide you, uh, but uh, put us in charge uh, if you want to, but know what you've done in doing so, uh, that we still answer to you. And ultimately, uh, pull the parking brake as you need to to get some clarification. And l we'll do that through design validation and a clear statement of work. Um, change is hard. Uh, uh, Behavioral research points this out from back to the 50s, and video conferencing is somewhat about behavioral change. And so in order to get people to adopt and adapt and use it, we need to have the right training for adoption. We right, need to have the right adaptation of these users um, so that it becomes part of their workflow. And the technology can't get in the way of them doing their job. Uh, the promise of having a, a video conferencing solution that gets out of the way of the meeting is here. When you do this in such a way that the video conferencing unit inhibits your meeting, you are then setting yourself up for fire. Uh, the technology, uh, the, we see it all the time. An executive team comes in, attempts to use a boardroom that they've just spent $75,000 in, and the documentation or the support or the functions don't fit the need because they have said, they have felt they've said to their IT, who have felt they've said to their vendor, 